Good day everyone, barangay captains, barangay officials, secretaries, group leaders, and anyone else who is watching this video. My name is Vincent Feldman, I'm a GIS consultant at the uh, office of the city mayor here in Bacchio. Um, recently, as per executive order, the mayor gave me the powers uh, to the mentioned office pertinent to the office of the city mayor and in relation to our mapping activities in the city. Um, so a lot has been done, it's uh, really a lot of work. Mostly the work is uh, getting information, the bureaucracy, as you probably are all aware about, um, but also figuring out how to do things in a practical way. Um, so the, the system we are using is an open database, it's called OpenStreetMap. The beauty of this is uh, with OpenStreetMap, any edit anyone makes on it, anyone else automatically sees that. So if I, for example, mark a street in Baguio where the construction has just finished today, and I mark there's now concrete on this road. It's not uh, gravel anymore or dirt. It's now concrete. I can add smoothness. I can add the quality of the road, all that information. The moment I say commit to the database, really the same second anyone in the city who accesses the database gets automatically this update. So I can update the street name. I can update a house number. I can update drainage, I can update um, steps, stairs, footways, or in case of the barangay, you guys, if some constituent builds a new house, uh, while they start the construction, you can already on the map add this information and say there's a new house under construction. You can already give the information, this is the house number we are going to give to this specific building. To make it easy for you, you don't have to do the mapping yourself because uh, to enter the information correct in the database, it's sometimes a daunting task. You need verification tools because we all make errors. Uh, the verification tools, they check on ourselves if what we do is right. Uh, there are many methods for that. I'm not going to get into the details. Um, but for Porok leaders or barangay officials, you can simply add a note. So you put a marker on the map, and in a marker you can write down specific information, like there's a new building under construction, construction started in, what do I know, November 26, 2023. Uh, the construction is a hotel, or it is a house, um, it is apartments, anything you can add really and the thing is we will then read these notes and we will enter the data from these notes properly and correct into the database so there will be no errors another task what we have been doing is drone imagery so I went to several city offices also to the universities uh, what you see here on the screen uh, these are now the drone images I have processed so far. There is still more drone images, which I haven't processed yet. Um, but this is roughly 9.8% of the city is now covered by drone images. That's not much, but we're going to speed this up. So what do we do with this? Um, if you zoom in, which I'm not going to do because it's going to get too lengthy video, but if you zoom in, you can see exactly where buildings are. And we use this information to very precisely draw polygons and say this is a building and then we enter the information to this building, is this a garage, is this a house, is this apartments, is this multi-level, one level, how many levels is it, uh, what's the house number, what's the lot number, is it maybe a shed, is it a GP shed. Is it a police building? Is it a barangay hall? Is it an outpost? 
So literally anything in the physical world we can put in the database and you can visualize that. For that we use the drone images so we can very accurately put the polygons in the database and then we enter the information to every polygon based on notes which you give us. So let me show you for example what I've done personally. Um, yeah, let's disable here the drone images. So this is the city boundary and the barangay boundaries. Now don't be afraid that the barangay boundaries are not according to the DNR. These are the boundaries of the city assessor office. So we have uh, two sets of boundaries, actually a few more, uh, but we have the DNR boundaries, then we have the assessor office boundaries, um, the barangays have sometimes their own boundaries as you are well aware. Um, so this is just one of the versions you're looking at. And then we can visualize here for example which areas here have house numbers um, and lots as reference, which means we're not sure if it's a lot or a house number. Then you see these buildings coming up. So these buildings are still to be determined what exactly the number represents. Then these are lot numbers. Um, that's mostly in-house, so I didn't do mapping lot numbers really. I'm not into that. The data is available at the assessor office, so why would I do that? But there is some we can visualize that if wanted, if necessary. Uh, the most important information, however, is this, the house numbers. Uh, here you see, this is a lot more. I'm now at roughly 4%, and it took me really a lot of time, especially in areas here in Irizan, walk around, figuring out the house numbers. Um, here's called Barrio, then uh, City Camp Central, um, Kazan, Kazan Hill is that, yeah. So you see throughout the city, uh, some rock village here, throughout the city I've been walking and recording house numbers. It's really a huge task for a single person and that's where you come in. That's where we are going to start to request the barangays and Purok leaders to cooperate with us. So I'm doing this voluntarily for the city. Uh, the city needs this information and I'm helping the mayor with uh, his projects on good governments and the uh, Baguio Smart City. This is all part of that, but it's simply too much for me to process all the data from all the offices. For that we have new projects ongoing, uh, it's called Youth Mappers, you will hear more about that later. Right now I want to talk with you about this one here, about the addresses. I discussed with my own Porak leader, Leticia, if she is able to look on a satellite image and recognize there the buildings, and from the recognition, if she knows the house numbers, or if not, if she doesn't know, if it's possible for her, within the Purok to walk around, observe, or if it's not on a house number plate, question the people in who live there, what is their house number, and then put that on the map. And she said, yes sir, we can do that. So I'm going to assume that this is a good solution. I was also advised by uh, two barangay secretaries to do it this way. Uh, to simply have the Purok leaders for their Purok, where they are responsible for, put a note on the map, so you don't need to enter the data yourself, just put a note. If you make errors, that's okay, it's just a note. And then we, at the geodetic department, we take those notes and we put the information in the database correctly, so there will be no errors. Um, at least I hope no errors. Obviously where humans work there's always something going wrong. Um, yeah, but let's zoom in. For example, this is called Barrio. 
So here you see the house numbers. Um, one can also visualize here the streets. So, street secondary, street surface, tracks. Um, now you see streets coming up with names next to the streets. So we can visualize that. But I'm going to shut this off again. So this is just an example of what you can do here with this. All this information is also available for the barring guy. So you can literally visualize the house numbers. You can visualize the streets. Uh, you can visualize also stuff like um, outpost or the barangay hall. Um, so here is a production barangay hall. This is called barrio barangay hall. So this is really very practical, I hope, for everyone. Um, but for now, let's focus here on the house numbers. So this is called barrio. Um, here we have Citycom Central. This here is uh, Sun Rock Village. The thing is, I want every pork leader to use a platform we have been um, preparing where you simply put a marker and then you enter the data in a form and then you click submit and that's the generation of a note and this information we can use to do this for every single barangay in the city um, which helps all the city offices but also your constituents why now this is maybe something most of you don't know when you look at services like grab courier services facebook facebook marketplace or even maps on Apple devices, Microsoft devices, Android devices. All of these use exactly this information. Now I hear a lot of people here, actually literally everyone who doesn't know, which is probably close to everyone at all, talks to me about Google. But all these companies don't use Google for a very good reason. Google is a commercial company. At city level, you're not even allowed to use Google. For Google, you need licensing. If you use Google for any mapping activity, even if it's just printing a map for constituents where you put markers on, and then you print this for constituents, you use Google Satellite, and you put some markers on it, and you print this for your constituents, that's already a clear violation of the Google terms and conditions. The thing is, you don't have to pay for it, you can use it for free. It's right here. This whole system is for free for you to use completely legally. And it will always be free because it's released under ODBL licensing. The beauty of this license is that you can use it literally for everything you want it to use for. The only thing you need to do is attributing. Which means if you print it and use the data, you need a very small disclaimer which says OpenStreetMap contributors. And that's it. That's all you have to do. You never have to pay for it. You don't face any charges. There will not suddenly be a lawsuit for using data illegally or whatever, because that's the risk with Google. Um, so this information, you don't just do that for yourself. And uh, you don't just do that for the city, you do this also for the commercial activities within the city. If couriers can find addresses much faster instead of looking around for 10, 20, sometimes half an hour instead of 10 or 20 minutes, couriers don't have to anymore because all the addresses are there. So you do this for your constituents, you do this for your city, you do this for the economical activity in the city, you do it basically for everyone to take the time, put the information on the map, put the notes and the form, fill it out for every building, and we take care of the rest. That's it. And this was the first video, the introduction video, to explain what we are doing, why we are doing this, and what it's going to look like in the end. Um, how you as barangay can use this data. So what you're looking at right now is a software called QGIS. That's programmed in the Netherlands. 
It's again, it's FOSS. FOSS means free open source software, which means you can completely legally use that. The data that's under ODBL, which is again completely free and open. You can do with it whatever you want, you can do with the software whatever you want. If you want, I can make for every barangay specific um, setups, which I can show briefly here. These are map presets. With these presets, you can literally say, I want to visualize all the drainage of the city. Or you say, I want to see all tourist establishments in the city. Or you say, I want to see the land use, where are farmlands, where is residential area, where is commercial areas. Um, in this case, this is an example for the PNP. All you've got to do is click Run Preset, and it will download the information for you. You can use this information complete offline, as a matter of fact. You can have it on your phone, even if there's no internet, it will work. So if there's internet outage in the city, first responders still need to find addresses, it'll work, it works offline. It's completely legit and legal. Um, Google does not support this option. OpenStreetMap does. Even in times of a huge calamity, let's consider a major earthquake, maybe even bigger than the one in the 90s. Let's consider a hurricane like never seen before with climate change, who knows what's going to happen five or ten years from now? The beauty of this is you can keep all that data on your phone, on your laptop, within the barangay, within the city, and it always works. Even if there's no internet, even if there's no electricity, you still have some power in your phone, it still works. So this is data about uh, the police. So here you see these blue dots here. These are the police stations. Um, there is actually a lot of information on every point. I just did not visualize it. Um, again, I'm going to explode the video if I'm going to show you this. But any data, literally any data, is already there and more data can be added. Outpost, uh, police outpost, police station, phone numbers, email addresses, all of that data, everything we can enter there. Um, no, that's already there, I already put it there. Um, yeah, you can zoom in. You can enable, for example, the drone image below it. You can disable the drone image again. You can uh, show satellite imagery in the background. So now you have an overlay over the satellite image. So you can play with this as you want. All we at the city would like from you is cooperation, that you help us acquiring the data, because we simply lack the manpower to get the data done. And I'm pretty sure a lot of PURC leaders, they know out of their head already a lot of numbers. So let's join hands, let's cooperate, work together, and we can get this done. And here I'm going to stop this video. This is then the end of the introductionary video. The next video, I will show you um, how to sign up for the platform we have been configuring to enter the data. So stay tuned and watch the next video, please. Thank you.